The tools shown in this video are for ethical hackers only. Do not purchase any of these tools if you intend to use them for malicious purposes. How can hackers scan air-gapped networks? After all, if a target is not connected to the internet, then how could an attacker possibly be able to scan a system and then upload malware remotely? Believe it or not, this is a widely held question, and yet at the same time, the answer has been out there for decades. Yes, decades. In 2008, Iran's Natanz nuclear facility was the host of Iran's nuclear program. Program, and it suffered a cyber attack. And yes, it was in fact air gapped. Though it was air gapped, it was hit with a massive cyber attack that crippled the facility and caused the whole facility to be disabled for some amount of time. And in fact, I've already talked about this in another video, so check that out on my channel. So how did that happen and how can hackers upload malware and then maintain persistence on a remote network that is air gapped to the internet? Well, we need only look at one of the largest cybersecurity brands out there. And for that, let's look at Hack5. This, this is how you hack air gapped networks. This is the Hack 5 Shark Jack. And this is actually not at all as innocent as it looks. This bad Mamba Jamba is capable of some serious damage, which is why you should be using the affiliate link tagged down below in this video description if you would like to get your hands on one of these and support this channel. But again, as I said in the beginning of this video, only do so if you are going to do this for ethical purposes only. Don't do this if you plan on using it for malicious purposes. That being said, if you want to become a penetration tester or you just want a cool hacking toy to play with and get more of an understanding of this industry, this is a pretty cool thing that you can mess around with. And it can be very helpful when conducting physical penetration tests. So how exactly does this work? Well, simply put, this executes a payload whenever it is plugged into a target system. And it doesn't matter if that machine is logged in or if it's locked, it will run that payload, which is j darn scary. That's freaky. Because how do you defend that? I mean, you have to have some serious defenses in place to be able to identify when a foreign US USB object like this is being plugged into your network and if you are in charge of a large network you might have potentially thousands to tens of thousands of potential plug-in ports that these could be put into and that's not good and yet that sounds way too simple right I mean you just plug it in and it detonates like that's that's it yeah yeah that is you see USBs were not invented with security in mind it was simply you trust the USB that's plugged in and because of that computers will trust newly plugged in USBs automatically now yes you can go into your settings and you can disable disable automatically allowing USB plugins. But if you're doing this on an entire network, that might require some additional work. And for smaller companies that do not have any IT staff, that might be something that they're not doing. And for large companies, I mean, infrastructure bloat is a thing. New computers are added to the network all the time, so they may miss some spots. And again, it only takes one of these to cause an incident. And that's also not including the fact that disabling new USBs is also not a good fix for this vulnerability because that will impact your business Business. That will impact the work that you're able to do. But you'll still have to plug into, say, your printer and other network devices that your business needs to function. So disabling USBs really is not the best fix if you're really looking to get work done. And this is also made worse whenever you can't exactly use Bluetooth or other wireless solutions because maybe you're trying to limit the amount of wireless signals that are going on in your facility or your organization. Maybe you work in a sensitive area that requires a limiting of your wireless output. And that pretty much forces you to rely on USB connections. And that increases the vulnerabilities that this can exploit. Another way to prevent attacks by malicious USBs is to use an antivirus solution or some other kind of software that can identify newly plugged in USBs and either create an alert, prevent any kind of connection to be made with new USBs. And while that is imperfect, that is an added layer of defense. Whenever I say this detonates a payload, what exactly does that mean? Simply put, it executes a script that you program into it. So you can arm it just like this and then you plug it into your attacker computer and then you can load whatever script that you want to run. So that could be anything from a benign Nmap scan to the execution of a back door, which would allow you remote access to whichever machine this is plugged into. And when it's in deploy mode, which is whenever you move this all the way forward like this, and then you plug it into the target computer, look out. Now in an environment like what happened in Atans, this can spread like wildfire. From there, you can really write a worm that can detonate on this and it can jump from computer to computer. Now, should you do that in a penetration? penetration test? Probably not. I would imagine that's slightly out of scope. So definitely be careful whenever you're playing with this to only use scripts that you know aren't going to break anything or kind of cause things to go out of scope. But I mean, the ability of this thing to just mess things up and cause a bigger incident, yeah, the, the options are there. And all of this is pretty concerning if you are a defender. Now, how exactly can you defend against these 100%? Well, it's easy. You turn off all of your computers. Okay, maybe that's a bad idea, but for real, that can be a combination of user training and awareness 
business whenever it comes to malicious USBs, along with strong detection and alerting on your network. Having software on your hosts that can identify newly plugged in USBs and newly running scripts is a huge plus. And if you're fortunate enough to be able to just outright disable new USB plugins, then that might actually be your best case solution. However, it is understandable that that would impact your general day-to-day -day business functions, so that may not necessarily be the best strategy from a whole of business standpoint. Otherwise, you're really just gonna have to make sure that your employees and staff are watching a video like this one that you're watching, so consider sharing it, so that way they can be aware of these kinds of USBs that float around in the world and can cause some serious damage. And while the Bash Bunny here is a phenomenal tool for ethical hackers and one that you can play with in your own home lab, it is also a dangerous weapon that hackers have employed in the past. And it's a phenomenal example to not trust what strangers give you. Let this video be proof that even if your system or your network is air-gapped, you're still not 100% safe. Life in cybersecurity is pain. So if you're interested in playing around with one of these for a personal project or to be a penetration tester, then definitely check it out. There's an affiliate link down in the video description that helps out support this channel as well. Again, only do it for ethical reasons. Don't use it for malicious purposes. This is a video that YouTube believes you would enjoy and I trust YouTube's suggestions, so you should too. And if you don't like it, then let me know down in the video comments. With all that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.